just want to double check before we run ahead with this. Hmm. Hey, Lauren. Sound is good. OK. All right. Hi, everybody, and welcome to our talk with Dr. Doug Knieven. Uh, again, we are at the American Holistic Veterinary Medical Association Conference here in Reno, the AHVMA. And today, I'm so excited to talk to Dr. Doug. Um, we're going to be going over something that a lot of people um, use in their daily nutritional practice with their pets, and a lot of people don't, but is a fantastic tool, and that is uh, fermented dairy products. So um, milk, kefir, and, um, and we're going to talk a little bit about how they work and what they can be really great for with our pets. Um, but first, I just kind of want to talk about who Dr. Doug is and allow him to introduce himself as well. So Dr. Doug earned his veterinary degree from Ohio State in 1987. He's the medical director of the Beaver Animal Cl Clinic in Beaver, PA, and has earned his certification in veterinary acupuncture, veterinary Chinese herbal medicine, and veterinary chiropractic. Dr. Doug has been practicing integrative medicine since 1995, written two books about holistic medicine, Stand By Me, a holistic handbook for animals, their people and the lives they share together, and the Holistic Health Guide, a natural care for the whole dog. Dr. Doug speaks nationally and internationally and was recognized as the AHVMA's Holistic Teacher of the Year in 2018. And this year is the keynote speaker yeah. here at AHVMA. So that's so cool. really cool. Yeah, it was today, right? No, actually it was yesterday. yesterday. I did all my lectures yesterday. Oh, good. So now you get to just have fun. Yeah, and do stuff like this. Do stuff like this. So thank you all for coming. If you have questions for Dr. Doug, uh, please post them here. Uh, hi, Marianne. Hello, hello. <laughs> Welcome. Um, but I would also love to give you, Dr. Doug, the opportunity to kind of talk about, you know, where did your journey uh, as mm. a holistic healer and somebody who works with animals, where did that start? Uh, well, when I was a kid, I loved animals. I yeah. think that's probably where all veterinarians start is the love for animals as a, as a kid. Yeah. And um, when I got into high school, it's interesting because I liked art also. Yeah. And sophomore year in high school, I could either take art or biology. Right. And so I took biology and then that tracked my career from there. Yeah. I went to Ohio State for undergrad and then I went to Ohio State for vet school. I graduated in 1987. Right. Okay. So I've been at this for a while. Yeah. yeah. And um, actually in veterinary school, after hours, mm -hmm. There was a local veterinarian that did acupuncture and he did an after hours lecture about acupuncture to us. Okay. And so I, you know, my, I wetted my whistle, but right out of vet school, you're still kind of learning how to do regular medicine. Right. It took a couple of years before I realized that, you know what, it just doesn't help everything. And mm -hmm. There's, you know, I got frustrated with the yeah. shortcomings of Western medicine. Sure. And that kind of sent me into my journey into holistic medicine. So I took, the acupuncture course right and i started sticking needles into animals and then i started attracting these weird people to my office and they asked me yeah uh, what is this homeopathic remedy about so i had to learn about that okay yeah and then because i was doing acupuncture i decided i needed to learn about chinese herbal medicine so mm -hmm. i got certified to do that wow um working on a lot of backs with acupuncture so i decided i needed to learn how to do chiropractic so i yeah. got certified to do that and all along the way i realized that um you know, if the animals weren't being fed right, they weren't going to get better no matter what I did. Right. And yeah. so that led me into a lot of research about real food, mm -hmm. which animals don't typically get. Right. So I, I have done a lot of research into raw food, but, you know, certainly fermented dairy fits yeah. right in there. Yeah. And I think that the research and the work that you have done has yielded so much opportunity for pet parents mm. to access that information, access high quality food for their pets, and really has been kind of revolutionary. So... I want to recognize you for that because um, I think, you know, there, there are some key players in, in the industry that are really pushing things forward and, you know, we're seeing change, you know, yeah. we're seeing people really understand that, that their pets are more like us than, than we thought, that, that just eating, you know, something out of a bag all day, every day <laughs> is probably, you know, it wouldn't be sustainable for us. Right. So why would it be sustainable for them? Right. Um, and it's interesting that you mentioned revolution because that was the name. I did a two hour talk yes. on the raw revolution. The raw revolution. So, yeah. Raw, raw. <laughs> <laughs> <Me too. laughs> cool. Um, but today we're going to be talking a little bit 
uh, more about fermented dairy products, um, fermented dairy and kefir, uh, and the, the numerous benefits for, for pets suffering from a number of different issues and just for the, the average pet. Um, so, you know, where, where do we kind of start with uh, that? Okay, so um, fermentation. Yeah. So fermentation is the process where probiotic bacteria are multiplied mm -hmm. in any substance. Mm -hmm. So a lot of different things can be fermented. We're talking specifically about dairy. So there's benefits to dairy in and of itself. Right. There's, uh, there are chemicals called lactoferrins, mm -hmm. which are antibacterial. Okay. So it, it's good just from the beginning. And especially if we're talking about raw dairy versus um, pasteurized dairy, because the raw dairy is gonna have the natural enzymes in it. Mm. Animals are much less likely to have allergic problems to raw dairy versus uh, pasteurized dairy. Right. Um, and then, so the fermentation propagates the probiotic bacteria. Right. But there's byproducts of the fermentation. Right. So fermented dairy isn't like dairy plus probiotics. You don't get the same thing. You have to have the fermentation They're process. They're in their active living. Right. It's, it's important that they, they've made a home of that dairy. Yes. Yeah. So, so the probiotics that you get from any fermented product mm -hmm. are going to be more diverse right. than like a probiotic supplement. Right. Because that would just be one or two or a combination of a few different probiotics. Where right. this is the intrinsic bacteria that's in there growing in kind of a natural synergy. Right. Not only that, but there was a study in 2011 where they looked at 25 different animal probiotic products okay and only two of them met label claim really so some of them didn't have the right bacteria some yeah. of them didn't have any bacteria some of them this sounds the like name the cannabis the industry this sounds like like cbd <laughs> yeah like, exactly yeah it's like the wild west out there so yeah, when, yeah when a client comes to me and says oh i'm giving a probiotic i'm like oh, i boy. don't know what that really means yeah yeah so so probiotics are questionable to begin with but then, like you said, even if it is a good probiotic product, it's only mm -hmm. got a handful, maybe at most, okay. of different bacteria in there. Okay. And then with the, pro, with the fermented dairy, you're not only getting the probiotics, you're getting the prebiotics, okay. which is the food that the probiotics need to live. Okay. Obviously, they have what they need to live because mm -hmm. they're living in the dairy. <laughs> right, right. Okay, fantastic. I, I've heard some other veterinarians describe you know, probiotics as kind of being very targeted, you know, that it, that you may need one specific type of bacteria that would be good for a particular disease, you know, but using that as a regular supplement is where people can get into trouble and, you know, have dominant cultures kind of permeate the gut. And then you've got, you right. know, you've got a different imbalance right. than what you started with. So I kind of consider it the pharmaceuticalization of a supplement. Got it. Yeah. In Western research, they can't really wrap their head around all of these different variables that are in a fermented product. Mm -hmm. So they have to isolate one bacteria and they do research on that one bacteria and they say, this bacteria can do this. <laughs> if you had all kinds of bacteria in there, they'd yeah. say, well, we don't know what's doing what. Yeah. And, and so there's it's a the reason that they do- the same thing as the cannabis industry. Yeah. You're just, we're just right. have these same pill. Yeah. Is it isolated CBD or is it a full spectrum extract? Exactly. Wow. So, so- um, gosh, I'm sorry, I interrupted. I you. know, no, but anyway, um, so there's research showing that specific bacteria can do specific things, right? But if you had all of those bacteria in one product, they could be doing all of those different things at the same time. I see. Yeah, right. And put, potentially modulating the effects of the other, right? And boosting certain things. They're right. they're working in synergy together. Right. Wow. And that's how pro, that's how probiotics were discovered. It was um, a Russian-born biologist, Eli Meshnikov, I okay. his name was. Right. And he noticed that, and this was, I think, in the late 1800s, he noticed that the, um, the peasants uh, who were drinking a lot of the products were actually healthier than their city counterparts. Wow. And somehow he reasoned that it was the bacteria and the fermented products that were actually making them healthy. Wow. And he coined the word probiotic. Really? Which means for life. Okay. Wow. <laughs> That's cool. 
I mean, what what product would you like better than one that's for life? Yeah, that's it's better cool. than antibiotics for against yes. life. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Literally. And, and also, I mean, that's a great segue because oftentimes, so often, uh, our, our our dogs are prescribed antibiotics when really what we need is a more holistic approach to solving gut dysbiosis and imbalance. Right. And these these products are a really great option to help with that. Right. Would you agree? Yes. So specifically with antibiotics, uh, kefir. Mm -hmm. So the the balance of microbes in kefir contains a uh, yeast organism. Okay. And that's something that's added afterwards during. Well, the it's part of the fermentation. It's, it's part of the culture that goes into the fermentation. I see. I see. Um, so antibiotics kill bacteria. They don't kill yeast. Okay. So the antibiotics can kill off the good bacteria in the system. Mm -hmm. But if and if you're giving probiotics at the same time as the antibiotics, it's kind of like bailing out the boat while it's sinking. Got it. Yeah. But yeah. if you give uh, kefir and it yeah. has the probiotic yeast, the yeast is not affected by the antibiotic. Wow. And it can stabilize the microbiome. Wow. In fact, there's a couple of studies um, that I showed you. Mm -hmm. The one was uh, a group of dogs were given seven times the dose of an antibiotic, a one-time injection of seven, seven times the dose of an antibiotic. Wow. Uh, one group of the dogs were, did not receive any of this probiotic yeast, and uh, I don't remember the numbers offhand, but a high percentage of them got diarrhea that lasted like six and a half days. Wow. Uh, second group got the probiotic uh, after the diarrhea started. So they already okay. had diarrhea, yeah. then they got the probiotic. Their diarrhea was much shortened oh, wow. duration. And a third cohort of the dogs actually got the probiotic at the same time as the injection. None of them developed uh, diarrhea. Really? Yeah. Wow. So, it, it's, so it's not even fixing the problem. It's, it's preventing, preventing it. Right. Wow. That's, that seems kind of the goal of everything that we're doing here. Imagine that. To, to not come at something from a curative perspective, but to come at it before it's even a problem. Right. Wow. And so the, the key is if your animal is on an antibiotic, get them onto a fermented a kefir product. Wow. That's so fantastic. I mean, I I haven't heard that. Right. We've been talking about antibiotics all weekend, uh, you know, and then that's that's really fantastic. So kefir instead of a fermented milk. But there is still a definite place for sure. just a regular fermented dairy. Sure. So, you know, we started, I started and got off the topic of talking about the, the um, the other byproducts, yep, yep. the byproducts of the fermentation. Right. One of those is CLA, okay. which is conjugated linoleic acid. Oh, of course. And conjugated linoleic acid. Yeah, it just rolls off your tongue. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, CLA has a lot of great benefits, but one of the main things is that it's anti-cancer. Oh, wow. Hmm. And um, th there are a number of different compounds that are made during this fermentation process antibacterial, anti-yeast, so mm. dogs that are yeasty can benefit right. from these right. products, yep. antiviral, um, mm. uh, antioxidants, the good kind of anti-stuff. Yes, yes. So, so fermented dairy can help in a lot of different ways. Wow, fantastic. So w would you, do you choose one or the other depending on, uh, in addition to when there are antibiotics in the regimen, do you choose one over the other depending on what um, condition you're dealing with? Well, not necessarily. I mean, antibiotics, the keeper. Definitely that, keeper. That's, yep. that's a gimme. Yep. But th other than that, what I recommend do doing is rotating through different products. Right. Because right. each product is going to have a different profile of bacteria. Okay. And we want the body to be given a choice of what bacteria do they need. Now, here's another thing that I think is important. Yeah. I consider bacteria a missing nutrient for dogs and cats. Right. Because dogs and cats
<laughs> there we are. Okay. Hi, everybody. Sorry about that. We are contending with uh, showroom internet here, and we are back. Thank you for your patience. Now, Dr. Doug, you were talking about um, the uh, postbiotics, if ah, you will. Ah, okay. That's the, that's the buzzword right. that I've heard. Thank you for that. Yes, because you, you, know, you have prebiotics, probiotics, and of course, postbiotics, which are the uh, compounds that are created because of the process of fermentation. Right, when right. We talk about CLA being anti-cancer. Yes. There's also compounds that are antifungal. So there's dogs, the yeasty dogs. Right, right. Um, antiviral, antibacterial, antioxidant. Yeah. So, you know, all of these compounds in this one, one kind of supplement. Mm -hmm. Oh, and I was talking about how bacteria are the missing nutrients. Yes, yes. So dogs and cats evolved eating a diet that was loaded with bacteria. Mm -hmm. And yet today we're feeding them sterile food. Right. And it's no wonder, you know, so there's yeah. all of this um, research showing how there's benefit of probiotics for animals. Yeah. But I really think it's just that they're not getting the nutrients that they're meant to get, that the, the probiotics or bacteria they're meant to get. Right, right, and absolutely. An, another um, proof that I have of this is the concept that wolves will eat part of their prey and then bury it. Yes. Yeah. Do you think they're burying it deep enough that another animal walking past wouldn't smell it? I'm sure not. No. And when you think about it, uh, some of the ancient cultures fermented their food by burying it. Wow. And so I really think that, yep. I mean, maybe humans got the idea from animals, yep. Yep. but they're actually fermenting their food and going back and getting the probiotics that way. Right. But of course, wow. even without fermenting it, they're getting the uh, probiotic or the bacteria from the intestinal the contents right. of their prey. That's fantastic. Very cool. <laughs> yeah, right. I, I, I mean, I'm passionate about probiotics. It's, it's incredible. And like you said, a lot of people don't know how many, how many properties there are, the, the antiviral, anti-cancerous, um, you know, we, cause we really have kind of a backwards idea about what dairy is and what, right. in large part, I think because of the way that we process it, right. you know, and uh, you know, the way that it is marketed towards us. So it, it, it must be challenging though, for you to get these products at the quality that they, that they need to be for them to be of that benefit. Like right. I, I, it's very hard for me as a person to go out and buy a raw dairy product, isn't right. it? Um, yeah, it is. Uh, pretty and, heavily and, regulated. Yes, especially raw dairy. Mm -hmm. Yes, but but there are companies out there, pet food companies, that are making raw dairy. I'm actually yeah. the chief. I mean, I have full disclosure. I'm the chief veterinarian for Cure Pet Food. Yes, and which is just now coming on the market, mm -hmm. and um, their first products are going to be their fermented liquids right. that are right now just available. So, yes. cool. um, so I'm really looking forward to having those available. Yeah, awesome. Very and cool. I don't actually shy away from consuming them myself right and i'm not recommending it to anybody yeah you know, this, yeah. i'm a veterinarian and i can do what i want with my own body i'm not recommending it for anyone else but that's how much i believe in the products the quality of the products that's the same thing that we say about all of our cbd products is like i can't tell you to use them but <laughs> i cover myself in them and consume them every day you can probably smell them on me from here <laughs> but yeah you know it's um like a, like we were saying you know people have for so long thought of their animals as completely separate and different yeah. from ourselves. And while they are, there are differences, you know, there's so much more that we can learn um, about the similarities. Yeah. So, so we've talked about, um, you know, allergies a little bit and, and kind of gastrointestinal issues causing diarrhea. What are, what are some of the other, other um, conditions that might really benefit from having uh, a raw dairy or fermented dairy product added to them? You mentioned cancer. Right. Well, behavior issues. Really? Yes, because probiotics actually um, directly affect the brain. Wow. Like there were studies with um, uh, major depressive disorder humans, mm -hmm. humans with depression, mm -hmm. uh, and giving a probiotic actually benefited. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Actually, what they did was they did fecal transplants from depressed individuals into germ-free mice wow and the mice became depressed no way they did the same thing with with uh non-depressed humans and the mice remained normal yeah so this research said that there could be a causative factor it could be the bad bacteria they did the same thing with twins 
So they had, um, I forget how many, like four sets of twins, one of which was obese and the other one was thin. Mm -hmm. They took the fecal uh, matter from the fat twin, the overweight twin, and put it into germ-free mice. The yeah. mice became overweight. Wow. They did it with the thin person. The mice remained thin. Really? Yes. Interesting. So, you know, in veterinary medicine, we're taught calories in equals, you know, yes. how much weight you're going to gain. But it's not that simple. Yeah. Wow. That's that's so interesting. So there's, you know, a lot of things that just from the probiotic perspective mm -hmm. can benefit. Um, wow. I don't think there's any animal out there that can't benefit from fermented dairy in one form or another. Right. And the, but the fermentation is a really important part of it. Right. Right. Oh, sure. That's that's the whole we're, we're going for the bacteria in this right. case, right? Well, and the postbiotics. And the postbiotics. And then also, I, I mean, I think nutritionally, aside from that, there's it is a really bioavailable and complete protein. Correct. Right. And actually, the fermentation breaks down the protein in a way that the amino acids are more digestible. Wow. So it's like pre-digesting the food. Wow. So cool. especially animals that... Um, can't gain weight mm -hmm. or um, just have a messed up GI tract, kind of like we talked about with diarrhea, right. um, can really benefit from these these products. Okay, yeah. I'm trying to think of a dog that wouldn't benefit from this, or cat. You know, it's just like anything. There's always a certain number of animals out there that may not react well to it for whatever reason. Yeah. So yeah. there's no, I don't, there's no panacea. Mm -hmm. I don't want to oversell Sure. You know, yep. fermented dairy. There yep. may be a, a dog or cat out there that just doesn't tolerate it well, and then you just don't use it in them. Right, right. So are there cases, is it common for, you know, lactose intolerance is common in humans these days. Yeah. Is that something that we see mirrored in our dogs? I have not seen that be an issue. No. Not mm -hmm. that I've seen. Different digestive tract. I don't especially know. if we're using something that is raw and pasteurized. Right. Yeah, totally right. different thing. Right. Yeah, what kind of dairy are the humans reacting to? Right. Cool. Um, I think we have some questions from folks that are watching live. Oh, we have somebody live here. Who has <laughs> Someone a in the audience. Someone in the audience. You raise your hand. So I have several dogs, and of course, they're all raw fed. Good. What I'm finding as they become senior citizens, like seven, eight, nine, that they don't tolerate the raw as well, and like a lightly cooked or something that's okay. a little better. Okay. Don't know why. Do you have? Like okay. Maybe a reason why that's happening. Okay. So the question is, um, this person, Miss Angela Ardolino, has <laughs> um, has uh, some dogs that are entering their senior years who have been raw fed for quite some time, and as they get into their senior years, they begin to tolerate that raw diet a little bit less and do better on a lightly cooked diet. Is what's your opinion of that? So there's a concept in Chinese medicine that raw food damages the spleen. Mm. Now, you have to understand from a Chinese medical standpoint, the spleen is really more about digestion than it is from the standpoint that we think of it. And the Chinese didn't um, classify the pancreas as a separate organism. So most of us think of the pancreas, which is a digestive organ, mm -hmm. as being part of the spleen system in Chinese medicine. Oh, okay. So raw food damages the spleen. And so there are people who do uh, Chinese food therapy who would say, oh, you should never feed raw food because it damages the spleen. And my answer to that is, well, there must be a lot of wolves out there with damaged spleens, right? Yeah. But if you do have a dog that's not tolerating raw well, it could be that with age, their digestive function just isn't as good as it used to be. And even though there's research showing that raw food is more digestible than processed food, I, I've seen the same thing. There's some dogs that ju just benefit from the food being lightly cooked. I kind of think the Chinese were on to something that maybe these dogs have a weak spleen and that's I why even the smaller dogs, large dogs, no problem. Huh. They're, you know, 16 years old, scarfing down raw. Yeah. But the smaller ones, smaller the dogs. Do, it seemed like they suddenly find it harder. So smaller dogs, you know, and the genetics of all the different breeds are different. Some of them are closer to the wolf than others are. I'm kind of thinking, you know, like exactly a little Maltese is probably yeah, Blanche is not a wolf. <laughs> <laughs> and she's definitely one of those. That's okay. been hard ever mm. since she's turned. Yeah. And, and see, that's where we, as raw food enthusiasts, need to be reasonable. 
You know, every animal is different. We mm. need to be, if we're so fixated on raw foods, like I'm going to make this dog eat raw food until it just, you know, has screaming diarrhea. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. Right. Mm. So I, do know, um, I know people who have had small geriatric dogs who are um, surviving off just a non-pasteurized fermented goat's milk or cow milk. Uh, Can you talk about that? So uh, she was saying that she, she knows of very old small breed dogs that are surviving just off of fermented dairy. And, and when you think about it, dairy Okay, we're back. Hello, we're back. <laughs> Hello. Um, can you hear us? Let us know if you can hear us. We are back. So sorry about this. Oh, I hear us. Good. Okay. Um, we're going to answer some questions from you guys. So if you're out there and you have any questions for Dr. Doug, let her rip. Um, we've got uh, Angel asks, um, has anybody found, have you found this product to assist with rehabbing parvo survivors who seem to develop malabsorption? Yes. Uh, well, so I don't have any personal experience, mm -hmm. but it makes sense that if they're not absorbing nutrients well, that a fermented dairy would be ideal because like I said, the, um, proteins are broken down in a way that right. they're more absorbable. Okay. So it makes a lot of sense. I don't have any personal experience with it. Sure. Um, and is there any kind of like microbiome factor of that to sure why they won't be absorbing? Because a lot of those bacteria help help with the absorption, right? Right. right. So it, yeah, it could be just a microbiome imbalance that's causing the problem, but parvo also damages the lining of the intestine. So it's hard to know for sure exactly what the uh, okay. issue is there. But no matter what the issue is, fermented dairy would be the first thing I would try. Okay. Um, so we have, uh, Angel asks, um, for a rescue, uh, Great Dane has a bloat surgery, um, malabsorption, leaky gut, pancreatitis. Oh boy. A whole bunch of different things. Um, is this a, is this a fasting situation? <laughs> yeah. I, what, I mean, this, this could be, this requires a whole session probably. Yeah. This is, this is a lot of different questions. Um, well, you know, certainly if we have malabsorption, it makes sense to do fermented dairy, uh, pancreatitis. I'm not, I'm not of the school of thought that says that fat causes pancreatitis, mm -hmm. um, which is kind of a common thought in veterinary medicine. I think it's more the combination of nutrients that are going in and how they're processed. Right. That's more likely to be causing the problem with, okay. pa with pancreatitis. Okay. So mm. that wouldn't scare me away from fermented um, dairy. Right. Interesting. Okay. Um, I think somebody asked, um, what's the difference in how they are produced? Um, do they have different benefits? So between uh, milk and kefir. Um, I think you kind of covered that. You know, the well, kefir has right. the yeast right. aspect to it. So, so kefir is fermented milk, mm -hmm. but then there's also fermented goat milk, which mm -hmm. isn't kefir because it's goat milk. And then, um, 
is there any difference in nutritional content between or or the profile of a goat milk versus a cow milk? Sure. Yeah. I mean, nutrient profile is going to be different. Yeah. I, okay. I don't really know the specifics to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. And then, um, boy, I'm trying to think. There's there's a difference with kefir in the fat content, I believe. Okay. Um, but but I, I'm I'm drawing a blank on exactly what that is. Sure. Sure. But in any. Putting on weight. Uh -huh. I remember when I switched all mine over, yep. over to raw, my two very active dogs became so skinny and adding keeper put weight on. Yes. Right. Yeah. So one of our audience members is saying that switching over to uh, a raw diet, the very active dogs that were burning a lot of calories did really well to put weight back on using uh, a keeper. Um, so that makes a lot of sense, especially, yeah. So in, in these, animals that are transitioning perhaps to a raw diet, maybe this is something right. that can help facilitate that. Right. Or dogs that can't tolerate a raw diet mm -hmm. or people who can't afford a raw diet, at least they can do some raw fermented dairy. Right. It's a good way to supplement the diet. Right. Yeah. I think that's something that it really deters a lot of people is, is the price of, you know, a full raw diet. But, you know, I, we always encourage people that every little bit helps right you don't have to go all the way in right. fact it, it can sometimes be beneficial probably to move slowly in the direction of right. that let I, the body yeah. get used to it i always say some real food is better than none at all right <laughs> that makes sense okay is there anybody else out there um angel says thank you so much for your time and information such a wonderful opportunity to learn they make their own keeper and they're very grateful for you dr doug oh well, thank you yeah Hydrochloric acid destroy it in transit. Yeah, I make keeper from goat's milk. Does the hydrochloric acid destroy it in transit? So I think they're talking about hydrochloric acid in the stomach. Oh. Destroying. That's what I got from the question. I or suppose. Am I mishearing? Hydrochloric. No. In transit. I think they're talking about tran transiting the intestinal yeah. tract. Yeah. Perhaps. Does it? I wouldn't think so. Um. I guess I'm not sure exactly. Does it destroy what? Yeah. What's your What's your so, question, Janet? You know, the, the, the bacteria, compound. the compounds. Uh -huh. You know, it's going to kill some of them, yeah. but enough of them make it through. Okay. Cool. All right. Um, Marianne asks, "Is one milk better than the other?" I mean, we kind of yeah. yeah. Like I, you I don't said, think so. rotate them. Right. Rotation is exactly. Great. One isn't better than the other. They're just different, and variety yeah. is the spice of life. Perfect. Cool. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for coming. Again, this is Dr. Doug Knaven. Can you tell everybody where to find you? I'm at Beaver Animal Clinic in Beaver, Pennsylvania. Cool. <laughs> I do have a website, but to be honest with you, I don't mind it very well, so okay. I probably don't want to direct people there. All right, cool. Or if you're at the American Holistic Veterinary Medical Association Conference, he is a darling of this <laughs> place, so you'll probably see him here next year. Or you can tune into, we'll, we'll be here, so All right. keep tabs on us. Thank you so much for joining us.